Hi there, Tony Nutley here, and this is one of the first in a new series of short videos that we're doing called Lessons from the Training Room, or Life Lessons from the Training Room. And these are basically little snippets that we've picked up or that we deliver on different types of programs that we thought we could put together in little snippets or bite-sized chunks, if you will, to enable you to develop, grow, and maybe even ponder some questions that you might like to ask us at some point. So the first one that we're going to explore today is this notion of happiness. Now, happiness is one of those things that there's a lot written about. In fact, happiness has a whole sort of psychology all of its own, and lots and lots of people have written lots and lots of books about it. So here's the starting question. What does it really mean to be happy? When you're happy, when do you notice it? Do you go around smiling, happy all the time, like a game show host? Or does it mean a sense of contentment? What does happiness really mean to you? How would you know if you had more happiness? Do you even want more happiness? And if you did, what might you do to be able to realize more happiness in your life? Now, of all of the books that are written and all of the ideas that are out there and all of the psychology and all of the tests and all of the studies, is there a short list of things that is worth considering to increase the level of personal or professional happiness that you might have in your life? Well, the short answer is yes. That's the good news. So I'm going to quickly go through this list that I've put together to give you some idea how you might want to increase uh, the level of happiness. Or I'm going to add in the word contentment as well, because I think happiness and contentment seem to go hand in hand. If you're content, you probably have a fair measure of happiness. If you're happy, you probably have a fair measure of contentness. contentness if I can get those words out. So the first thing to increase happiness in your either personal and indeed your professional life is outcomes or goals. Have a goal. Have some form of direction, motivation, um, and activity of progress in your life. Now, it doesn't have to be this huge thing. I want to build an empire. I want to build the tallest building in the town. I want to swim the channel. They're all great things and fantastic. But it can be smaller chunks. It can be smaller things. But having an outcome, having some form of, you know, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do something new, add value to my life, to my, the lives of those I love, to the lives of my community, some form of motivation, you know, orientated to the future, goals. Now, the things about goals, most of you will know, uh, if you know me personally, I'm involved in NLP, and I'm involved in coaching, and I'm involved in personal development. One of the things about setting outcomes or goals is this idea of well-formedness, well-formed outcomes. And I've talked about this a lot in previous videos. So the shorthand version of a well-formed goal is it's got to be positive. So rather than I don't want to be unhappy, I want to have more happiness, as an example. So always framed in the positive, a positive statement. And we've, ex we've explored this before, but the reason is the unconscious mind cannot process negative instructions. The second part of this shortened version of well-formedness, so first is the P for positive, then we go to R for resourced. Any outcome that you need, any sort of goal that you want to work towards, got to have some kind of resources. Now resources come in lots of forms and shapes, but essentially resources bog down to time, bog down to time, um, energy, maybe some money, but more interestingly, knowledge, wisdom, help access to information like the internet, access to information maybe in books, which I'm going to talk more about later on. So resources, you've got a goal, how are you going to do it? What's required to make that a reality? Because you can have all the goals in the world, but without the resources, it's never going to happen. It's not going to add to your overall happiness, either personal or professional. And then the final part of this shortened version of well-formedness, so we've got P for positive, R for resource. The next one is own part or ownership. You must be in control of this. It's no good saying, I want to win the lottery, because that would be great. It'd be really positive. I would then have all the resources in the world available to me. I've got no control over that, so own part, ownership. I've got no control over that whatsoever. So you've got to have control of your goals so that often when we say smaller, smaller goals are more important than bigger ones because they're more achievable, less resources required. Um, so think about what one simple thing as a goal can you set for yourself in the next seven days. It doesn't have to be huge. In fact, it's often better if it's small because you have evidence, look, I can do this. I can start making progress. So set yourself a goal. Remember, it has to be positive, 
resourced and you're in charge of it, you're in control of it. Great. The next thing on the list of how to bring more happiness into your personal or professional life is to be in service of others in some way, to serve others. Now, Jim Rowan always said, you know, success is not something that you can go chasing after. Success is something you attract into your life by helping other people, by becoming the thing that people want to go, he's doing something, she's doing something, I want to join them. So service to others is very, very important. And again, this comes in lots of different ways from you know, working perhaps in some charitable endeavor or passing on information, mentoring or coaching to a young football team or your kids or somebody you know helping out cut their grass. It doesn't really matter. But this idea of helping other people helps you. So think about, I'm going to set myself a goal for the next seven days. Over the next 14 days, I'm going to think about how can I serve other people and bring more happiness into their lives. That really will help you. Which leads on to the next thing, this idea of gratitude or being grateful for what you have. Now, this is actually very important. Here in the West, we live in the land of absolute, uh, it's just almost like heaven. We have access to all sorts of resources, all sorts of fantastic things that are at our disposal. You're watching this video now. How many years would you need to go back? That would have been impossible. In fact, it would probably have been impossible, prohibitively expensive for, for me to stand in front of this camera, encode it, put it onto the computer, upload it to the internet, and have some way that, that you could see it. But technology's come on so fast and so amazingly that we have access to so much stuff. But are we grateful for it, or do we just take it for granted? If you live here in the UK, like I do, you probably live in one of the greatest nations on Earth. Why? Because you're free to do whatever you want. You can get a job. You can go to college. You can go to university. You can not do any of those things. I'm not going to encourage that because it's not very healthy, but you could. That's why people want to come and live here, because it is a fantastic country. The amount of new businesses that are started every single day is astounding. And I'm not particularly aligned to any particular government here. It's the nature of being in Britain. It's an entrepreneurial thinking. So be grateful for the opportunities you have, even the ones that you've not yet taken advantage of. Think about all of the things you could be grateful for. In fact, the activity for this particular heading is make a list. Make a list of all the things that you could and should be grateful for in your life right now. Maybe your health, maybe your job. Maybe the people who care about you. Maybe the people that you love. Maybe it's been a sunny day and you've had a great walk in the park. It doesn't really matter. Think about the things that you could and should be, be grateful for right now. The next heading is activity. Now, I'm not a great one for exercise and sports and any of those things, and those of you who know me will know that. However, even I will tell you, if you engage in some form of physical activity, some kind of sports, go to the gym or go for a, a brisk walk or any of those things, it will be good for you. It will get your heart pumping, get the blood moving around, get more oxygen to your brain. You will feel better. Activity is important. You don't have to join a gym. You don't have to join a club. A simple thing, a brisk walking in the park will do you the world of good. The next thing is this idea of personal development. And in many ways, this is the big one. Personal development is hugely important. I cannot tell you how important it is. Now, I've heard recently some people saying, I don't read personal development books, as if somehow it's beneath them. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. People who engage in personal development are pretty much always more successful, pretty much always happier. If you look at anybody who is successful in life, pick any of them, and you get to find out how they did it, they will tell you they engage in some kind of personal and, of course, professional development. It's essential. Now, why is it important? The wisdom of success is contained in the pages of personal development books or personal development programs like this or NLP programs, practitioner programs, uh, coaching programs, leadership development programs, management development programs, uh, communication skills, any of these things are important because they will add to your personal value. So that's my list for now. So it's the first one, as I've said, uh, lessons from uh, the, the training room. I hope you enjoyed it. And the next one will be coming soon. So keep coming back, and there will be more. Take care of yourself, and I wish you all of the happiness in the world.